Okay, so we will uh, look at a few demos that I have been planning to do for some time, fine. So I think uh, uh, quite a few of you have sent me the error in evaluation of the derivative of sin x, okay. So we will, uh, I will, I will repeat part of that process. Most of the codes that you write will be either in C, C++ or Fortran or whatever. But because this is a demo, like last time, I am going to use a scripting language Python, right? And again, to do the plots, I will use a Grace Plot. And we'll also look at a second demo, which is a solution to Laplace's equation, right? And I'm, so I am not going to do anything fancy. I'll just do the initial simple, right? Just to show you how the thing goes. And again, as I said, most of you may have already tried to write these uh, programs. So the objective is twofold. So I am not going to show you a canned, pre-canned package. So I will actually write it so that you can see that I make the same kind of mistakes that you make. Right? There is nothing, nothing unusual about it. All of us are error prone. The second thing, of course, is uh, maybe you will get an idea as to how this process actually works. Fine. And along the way, we will look at the results and possibly discuss some of the results. If you have any questions, right, you feel free to stop me. Right. So we will we will just explore what it is that we have. So the first demo is going to be basically uh, how well we are able to evaluate the derivative. I will write for the first order, right, one sided difference, uh, say a forward difference. We will do a forward difference and look at what happens and maybe we can also do a central difference just for fun. After that, I do have a CAN package. Right, because I do not want to do the third derivative and fourth derivative, it's the, you do not get anything out of doing that, fine, is that okay, right. So I am going to use my uh, particular favorite version of Python called IPython. Since I am also going to do Laplace's equation and I am going to do the visualization using a, a package called Maya V which was originally developed in this institute, so obviously I am going to use that package. It is part of a and thought uh, suite of uh, programs right now. So let me just get started, right and along the way, uh, uh, yes I mean I know that some of you may not be familiar with Python and so on, where it is important I will try to show you what what is happening, right, what, what this language is all about. But if you want to find out I would suggest there are tutorials out there you can go learn the language by yourself, it is not that difficult, okay. So once you know one programming language, uh, you should be able to handle it, fine. Okay, so the first thing is to just set up grace plot so that we are ready to plot, okay. Since I know I want to plot, so I get my plotting package ready and uh, of course it is going to be an intense white color that may not come out that well on the screen, so I will quickly change it to quickly change it to a color that will quickly change it to a color that is more amenable to the videotaping and so on. So I have my plot screen ready. All I need to do now is to get something to plot, right, okay. So I am going to use uh, again the package uh, numpy which is uh, part of the nthought uh, scientific suite. So from maybe I will just import, I will do it, this is compared to what I did last time, this is really the proper way to do it. So I import nump as np, so it will be called np instead of nump, fine, okay. Okay, the point at which I am going to take the derivative, I think in the assignment I had suggested pi by 4, so I will say x equals, so in np of course having called it NP I may make a mistake so keep your keep stay stay alert so that I do not make a mistake okay. I think pi by 4 is what I started 1 quarter of pi by 4. I say pi by 4 but I always multiply by 0.25 right even if I am using a scripting language. And the initial dx we can choose the same as uh, we can choose the same as x okay. so it is very large the initial dx is quite large okay. Right, pi by 4, 4 is almost 3 quarters, the initial dx is quite large. Now I want to be plotting this stuff, so what we will do is we will have an error 
and we will have the dxs that we are going to generate. So, I am going to have uh, a, a list that I will create an empty list that I will create which is called error and I will create uh, dx capital dx which will be the list of dxs that we are going to use fine we are, we are, we are set now. So, because I am a bit lazy and it is a good programming practice I will predefine sin x because I know that I am going to constantly be using sin of x I predefine sin x as right. So, S x is sin x and its derivative which I will just call C x is m p dot cos of x fine. So, we have now defined sin x and cosine of x same value because it is pi by 4 fine. So, we are now set. So, what we will do is how many how many different dx values shall we take say about 60 60 you have taken about 60 okay I will do 60 for i in range 60 okay. So, first we will define the derivative df. So, that is going to be I know I am going to divide by dx so I open bracket close bracket every time you open bracket you should get into the practice of closing the bracket sin of n p dot sin of x plus d x having said that I opened and did not close the bracket s x divided by d x that is the derivative that is our power difference and there is an error in this derivative what is this error? So, I am going to take the absolute value of the error. So, that is going to be d f minus cosine x which is the error and I want the relative value okay. So, the relative error so that is the error. So, now I have got for that d x I have the error. So, all I need to do is I need to save this somewhere I have created e r r just for this reason. So, to the list of errors I append this current error and to the list of dx's I append my dx okay. Now, all I have to do is create the next dx. So, dx is uh, 0 0.5 I would not use any weird pi you can say star equals but anyway I will just say dx equals 0 0.5 times dx. So, I will have the dx value fine I think I have got everything there. So, it should be done. So, what we do is we plot this. So, on the graph that I created I plot d x versus error error versus d x error versus d x and what do I get but that does not make sense right. So, the deal is what the heck is happening what is happening here that does not make sense. So, we will have to fiddle around a little with the scale. So, it seems that the error started off at some value goes linear this is what you would predict that it linearly goes to 0, but there seems to be something happening on the uh, on this part there seems to be something happening here. So, I will change the scale the key thing to do is I want to change the scale to a logarithmic scale. So, I go to 1 e minus 16 which is about as small as I can get here and I go to a logarithmic scale. I apply that ooh, that's and change the major spacing values okay. So, this is what I would as I said this is what I would normally go through and let me just accept this let us see. So, we get something that looks like that but it clearly it goes down to 10 power minus 8 10 power minus 9 let me change the x axis also because I know that that 2 goes through. So, 1 e minus 20 right okay and go to a log scale this 2 I will need and I apply that and that is what I have got fine. I think a lot of you have seen this I see a lot of people nodding this is what I have got. So, if it were a if the uh, so in calculus what you would do is remember it is called finite differences because we just took a difference and left it like that we did not go through the infinite process the infinite process is you take the limit delta x going to 0. So, in calculus what you would expect is as delta x goes to 0 the error should go to 0 and you should get the derivative 
right but we have a machine that has finite precision and therefore we have round off error and the slope of this line is what is this, what do you expect the slope of this line to be the slope of this line the slope of that line should be 1 right because the truncation error the convergence remember this is the order at which the speed at which it is going down it is converging to the actual answer was a delta x right so the exponent is 1 so the slope of this line would be 1 I am plotting log delta x log error versus log delta x now okay so the slope of this line is 1 but surprisingly there seems to be it seems to stop at something that is uh, not such a smooth line but if you squint at it it looks like it has slope minus 1 right if you sort of squint at it it looks like it has slope minus 1 fine okay so we will we'll leave this graph and uh, this value here is of the order of 10 power minus 8 2 into 10 power minus 8 okay you may not be able to actually read it out but it is of the order of 10 power minus 8 and that error occurs close to 10 power minus 8. So looking at this the immediate conclusion that we can come to is if you are doing forward differences at least with this particular function we will try out different functions a little later at least with this particular function it is not worth taking a delta x smaller than 10 power minus 8 okay it is just not worth taking delta x below 10 power minus 8 because you are going to just be getting your round off error is going to dominate and it is not getting any more accurate fine. So I will just hold this graph just so that uh, I can plot another graph on top of it and what we will do is we will go through the same process we will now do central differences okay we will go through the same process and we will do central differences. So let me redefine my uh, dx because I have sort of set uh, maybe this is not what I wanted oh, 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 oh I made a mistake oh, what the heck. here we go let me define my dx as equal to x again I redefine I clear up my capital dx I clear up my error I reset them to 0 okay and uh, in order to get in order to get the first difference so I am just reusing I am just reusing the same code the only difference is for central differences this is sin of x minus delta x now you understand why I am I am sort of using this uh, and I have to divide by 0 0.2 uh, half 2 dx in this case anyway I will make it 2 dx I will divide by 2 dx I think everything else is fine everything else is the same everything else remains the same <coughs> okay that is fine. So if I plot this now so this is second order accurate if I plot this now you have already seen so for this kind of exploratory work an interactive interface like this is quite quite useful right so if you are doing production runs and for the kind of thing that you are learning I would suggest that you stay with C or C++ or Fortran or whatever and this is what we have okay so it is the it is delta x squared the truncation error is of the order of delta x squared that means that it is converging at delta x squared so the slope of this line here is 2 is 2 because I have taken log okay and I am plotting versus delta x this slope has not changed the round off error is not changing so what has happened is I have gone to a more accurate scheme and there is a line here because this is a log log scale I, I would suggest that if you have not tried it out already figure it out just write out the relative error take log on both sides and see what you get right and you will see that you can actually explain why this is a a 45 degree line the round off error line is a 45 degree line it is a 45 degree line and essentially what it says is that in the numerator right every time the delta x becomes closer to 0 okay in a binary system by 1 bit you lose 1 bit in the numerator in round off error and effectively you have so you are not getting as as you hit up you hit this limit so this value is of the order of 10 power minus 11 okay 
So the best that you can get is of the order of 10 power minus 11 but the delta x that you can take in order to get that 10 power minus 11 is 10 power minus 6. So if you decide yes I want a more I want something that has better truncation error I go to a delta x so I go to something that is converging at de, as delta x squared I cannot take as small a delta x. Yes I have gained something instead of 10 power minus 8 it has become 10 power minus 11 but I just cannot make it you know I cannot go back to 10 power minus 8 at delta x is 10 power minus 8 that is not possible that does not work because if you do that you are going to end up back here so you have gained nothing. The second order scheme is giving you the same as the first order scheme that is the key okay that is the key it's very important because sometimes we have a tendency to say oh I am going for very high accurate I want to get this really accurate scheme <coughs> go for as high order as possible make the delta x as small as possible so there are you have to be careful you have to be careful we have the resources but you have to be careful okay so now instead of so I can do backward difference forward difference you know there are a variety of ways by which I can I can go through this as I said I have got a, a pre written pre written code for uh, so I will just import the pre written code that I have so all of this stuff as I said you can just go through a python tutorial quickly and figure out what they can doing here so in this I have something called error and what this will do for me is this will open up this nice window again I will make sure that I have set it up so that the demo colors are on right so that I do not blind you guys let me go back here and uh, and I have a simple function plot error which will actually plot the error it will compute this for first order forward difference backward difference second order right second order central differences one sided differences so there are a whole host of these kinds of things third order and fourth order that is what it is going to do. So let me show you oops I have an error there but it does not matter let me show you what I have got so that is what we have okay so this needs a little explanation it is really messy so what I have got here I hope this is clear what I have got here is first order forward difference the symbol the symbol is backward uh, is a dot is uh, backward difference second order centered second order forward the rhombus is second order backward difference third order and fourth order we'll zoom in on that so that it's clear as to what we are what we are up to in this scale what i want to show you is yes that line round off line you can't get you can't avoid it it's going to be there you have to live with it okay so whether you do first order second order third order fourth order now you know the slopes are 1 2 3 4 okay and in this region it does not really look like so I would not trust anything beyond this though it does it is lower here but this looks like the same noisy thing going on so fourth order that is of the order of 10 power minus 13 so going from second order to fourth order, fourth order I went from 10 power minus 11 to 10 power minus 14 10 power minus 13 and the delta x is of the order of 0 0.001 okay and in a similar fashion here that is still of the order of 10 power minus 12 and the delta x is of the order of 0 0.002 so it does not okay so you I want you to bear this in mind so if you are going to use combination you are going to do these derivatives you are going to use combinations of delta x you know second derivatives third derivatives which we will see as we go along at that time when you are doing it I am going to add a second derivative term I am going to add a fourth derivative term please remember that that contain that curtails that limits the size of the delta x that you can choose is that fine everyone okay let us just zoom in to see what is happening here so what I can do is I can pick one segment somewhere there and yeah lots of graphs but this is the one that I am interested in this was my first 45 degree line right forward difference and the dots on it are the backward difference and this part they are reasonably good one on top of the other remember I am taking absolute value the sign was different but they are reasonably good they are essentially one on top of the other the derivative is the same you would expect it to be the same in the other case yeah they do vary they are close to each other they do vary fine so if I hunt for the if I just hunt for the 
other trough here is the second derivative term second order term for the first derivative second order term for the first derivative there are three of them so you can see the the box black box the black rhombus right the square the rhombus and the uh, dashed line the minimum is not quite at the same point so it most probably you know but they are they are reasonably they are reasonably fine but they stick to each other right they are quite close so in that sense if you are forced so central differences have certain advantages one sided differences have certain advantages we will see why we would use each one at different points we will see that as we go along but the truncation error behavior seems to be the same okay is that fine and uh, finally just to keep just for completeness so you can see around here as i said i don't quite trust this so i would most probably take a value around there right which is uh, about 0.02 and possibly a value around there that would be the smallest delta x that i would choose right and that's about 0.015 is that fine please bear in mind that this is for sin of x at pi by 4 okay so we are not doing mathematical analysis or something of that sort this is purely empirical this is purely empirical is that fine what do we have what is the next thing that uh, we can do maybe we can change the function should we try changing the function so what I will do is I will create another uh, I will create another plotting I will create something else to evaluate it so o e r r dot I will just set this up first okay so you are going to get a flash of white again let me quickly load my demo <coughs> parameters so that uh, I get that out of your eyes okay so we have that ready we need to define two functions okay so maybe I will not do it and you can you there are you can create lambda functions in python but I will just create I will say define f of x I will define f of x what do you want to what which function do you want give me a function x squared okay fine x squared so I return return x squared define f prime f prime is the derivative right so I have to be careful I mean I could have it do do it analytically but let us do it ourselves okay return I do not want to do any fancy programming here 2 point star x 2 x is the derivative okay is that fine so what I will do is I will now plot and if everything works well that should just work oops I seem to have some error as I said but it is fine what is this what is the strange thing that has happened here what is the strange thing that has happened here right you just get what what is this line this line is going all the way down this line goes all the way down that is a 45 degree line right can we explain this line and then you have this which is the first order first order so what can we explain this line so normally if you were to do this what you have to do is in your mind it is like playing a detective game in your mind you have to predict from what you know you have to predict this is what I expect I try this function this is what I expect you have to try it out right that is how you that is how you exercise your understanding you predict what is going to and then plot it okay that is what you do and then you have to explain the difference if you if you manage to get what you what you predicted yeah that is fine but otherwise you have to explain the difference what is happened here can you tell me what is the deal we are remember we are plotting x squared and we have a so this this truncation error if you go back and look at it this truncation error was like delta x into dou squared phi dou x squared or dou right it was it was a second dou in this case it is dou squared f dou x squared so dou squared f dou x squared is 2 you see what I am saying dou squared f dou x squared is 2 so but any higher order will be it is supposed to be 0 it is supposed to be 0 it is supposed to be 0 but actually what you got is only round off error the truncation error can go the round off error is always with you unless something peculiar happens we will see if something peculiar can happen 
we try out one more and see something right so the the, the truncation error is zero because you have picked something so that the third derivative the truncation error has a third derivative so legally you should have got zero right but you are stuck with round off error is that fine you are stuck with round off error and that round off error is with you so even if I were to shift the graph down and yeah there is something funny happening here so there may be because of the representation we may have chosen delta x values where indeed the truncation error by chance and the round off error because of the values are exact in binary system happen to be 0 sometimes you are lucky and that is what these lines indicate there are values there are values at which it is actually gone to log 0 which is minus infinity there are a few values where it is happened is that fine okay but otherwise uh, you know otherwise what we have I am sorry maybe I should not have done that I will close it otherwise what we have is you just have round off error right and that is it you have, you have to live with it even though you do not have even though you have managed to choose a scheme so that your truncation error is 0 is that fine okay are there any questions you want to try a, a third function suggestions for a function Sin yes x sin, well that is going to behave very close to sin I mean unless we pick a dirty value or something of that sort right. Let, you want to try log x it is okay let us let us let us try log x right sync unless we you could try uh, you could try the sync function or something yeah we have to pick a value maybe you could try a value which is close to 0 but then I have to be careful how when I do it I cannot take relative errors you have to take absolute errors okay fine we will we will uh, uh, human we will try log x or whatever it is okay that is fine. So I will create uh, I will create one more uh, this time I will go through this quickly and uh, yeah I really should have this so that I reuse the, you reuse the plotting program but anyway it does not matter so each one of those sort of imports its own uh, grace plot it does not matter. So I now define uh, g of x a different form oops I, I want to call it g of x h of x see this is how you make programming errors. I already have a g which is the plotting which is the plotting right so uh, so I want to return uh, you want log of x is that what you said log of x and I define h prime I call it h p of x and return the derivative is 1 by x. Okay. okay so let us see what we get now O2 O2 H comma HP is going to pop up maybe oh what happened up, 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 up. I made a mistake And sometimes you make you can play you can pay a price for this and see whether the price how bad the price is. Oh my god, look at all those. So log is log is a little interesting. So we get something that is very similar to well, it is a trans transcendental transcendental function. So maybe even sync would have been the same, right? I mean, so but there are there are places where there are places where it does seem there right the round off error seems to go away there are places where when you are doing computations you cannot hunt for these I mean you do not know what values of x you are going to get right so these are not is it is interesting to know this that this can happen and by chance by chance right if it happens for you it is nice in this case because I am getting minus infinities and so on the program is not doing anything bad right you, it pops up a window I kill that window program is not doing anything bad but you have to remember that when you are taking log you have to check the argument that is one of the things by chance it may turn out that it is 0 okay by chance it may turn out that it is 0 but otherwise I think it looks the behavior is essentially the same right. So that is about 10 power minus 19 
10 power minus 13 this value though is uh, 0 0.004 into 10 power minus 4 10 power minus 5 the x value so you have to, I think uh, right so the slopes and where they intersect what values that you take are essentially the same okay okay fine so we are we are we are, we are done with this if there are no questions are there any questions if there, are, if there are no questions I will leave this uh, demo be let me just show you right we will try to see how much we can do by way of uh, uh, Laplace's equation today fine so I will choose a small small grid to start with what I am going to do is I am going to use as I said a package called Maya V so from I will just set it up right so from this Maya V I will import right a particular module called MLab now initially what I will do is I will use a 5 by 5 I will, I will choose a I am sorry I This is what is called so if you have a live demo these are the things that can go wrong let me see if I can get out of that let me restart it okay so what I will do is I will uh, I will create a 5 by 5 uh, system first or a right 6 by 6 system or whatever we will create a small system and then uh, just so that you understand how the numpy python part works right I just want to make sure that you get that part first right and then we will see so let me make sure since I said numpy let me make sure that I import numpy as np and just in case I need it I will import grace plot also. Okay, so all that is done my basic homework is done now in this case I am going to use a package called mgrid I am going to use a function called mgrid and what it does is so between 0 and 1 we have been solving problems between 0 and 1 I am going to have 5 grid points you have seen this notation before and in the x in the x direction and in the y direction also we will have the same thing so this 5j so it is actually a complex number it is a way by which you tell you tell numpy that you want 5 grid points and that creates essentially a mesh okay so let me show you the mesh that is x so you can see the x values are right 0 and then they are increasing by 0.25 Point five point seven five one. okay so those are my x values and my y values are in a similar fashion 0 0.25.5.751 so x y combinations will give me coordinates a combination of an entry from x and an x entry from y will give me coordinates okay and my solution that I used what I used for right what I suggested for you guys to try out was x squared minus y squared so I can see what that looks like okay that is that is x squared minus y squared so that is phi x squared minus y squared and if yeah I mean you can you can check it out but you can see that the diagonals are 0 x equals y is 0 right so that is reasonable that that looks okay is that fine okay now I want to show you and this is something that is done uh, in most a lot of these uh, programming languages scripting languages let me just show you to, uh, to, to, to see how I am going to index I am going to choose ranges of indices so that I do not have to do a lot of loops so I just created a, uh, uh, a list an array which has uh, 11 elements 0 through 10 okay so if I say a of 0 that gives me 0 a of 1 gives me 1 fine no big deal you can also do this you can say a of 1 colon minus 1 and that will basically drop the first element drop the last element 
is that fine everybody is with me so instead of 0 through 10 I have got 1 through 9 okay I just want you to understand this so if I make this 2 instead of uh, 1 it drops the first two elements retains all the others okay if I make this minus 2 it drops the last two elements am I making sense so what this allows me to do is so when I am saying i plus 1 i minus 1 all I will do is I will shift I will shift that okay so for instance uh, a of 1 colon minus 1 gives me all the interior points essentially okay so in a similar fashion phi of i this is this has two coordinates 1 colon minus 1 comma 1 colon minus 1 will give me the interior points okay so that gives me the interior points is that fine so because we are going to solve for this we are not supposed to know the <laughs> know the solution we are going to solve for this I will set it equal to 0 I will set the interior points to be 0 so that is my phi now this is my solution vector okay this is my candidate solution my initial condition is 0 and the boundary conditions are set is that fine everybody okay so how would I do Laplace's equation right so normally in in C right you would use a for loop in Fortran you would use a do loop here we are just basically going to write it out so what you would have done so far was so 1 colon minus 1 so the interior points I am going to update the interior points equals 0.25 times 1 fourth of what phi of we want to shift to the left 0 colon minus 2 that is shifted to the left comma 1 colon minus 1 nothing done in the y direction plus phi of I want to shift to the right 2 colon comma 1 colon minus 1 I do not want to do anything in the y direction now we repeat the same process but only in the y direction okay so phi of what is it 1 colon minus 1 so I do not do anything in the x direction now comma 0 colon minus 2 so I have shifted it down oh sorry 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 let us go through this again I hit enter too quickly set the center value to 0 and I have one more phi of 1 minus 1 comma tell me 2 colon okay that should be right so we just have this right and it is always important that we able to see what we have fine so what I will do is I will create a visualization now I am going to use Maya V to do that so I say V there are various ways to do it as we go along maybe I will show you different ways by which we can do it today I will just use MLab and I will use something called a contour surface contour surface to contour surface I need to pass it the x y values and the phi value okay so I have x y phi and I would like to tell it how many contours so let us say we add about 10 contours okay now because this is a this is actually a 3D plotting utility it will plot the contours on the actual solution surface right today right now I do not want to do that we will do that we will do that at a later date right now I want to keep it simple because uh, so what I will do is I will say uh, warp scale so how is right so all of these things as I said you can their documentation is available online so I will just set that to 0 and that should think for a short while and just basically give me that that does not make sense so you can ask the question what is that okay so we will try to see whether we are able to make any sense out of it give it a coordinate system I will I will scale it up so that still does not make sense so let us see if we can use MLab to add an outline or something of that sort so that uh, we get the box okay that is our unit square okay that is our unit square with the contours and uh, let me maximize it for you make it large okay um, 
I think I will also add a scale so that you have an idea as to what is happening. Okay, we have added number of contours. Range texturing. Okay, that's not what I want to do. What do I want to do? Show a legend. That is what I want to do. I want to show a legend and I close this. There, we have got a legend there. Now I will maximize this so that you can look at what we have. There we go. So I have a legend, fine. I have a I have the legend, it goes from plus one to minus one as you would expect, and that is my initial guess. Fine, everyone. So this uh, in case you cannot make that scale out. Yeah, so that the x y coordinates. So this is this is the x direction. That's y direction. Fine. I hope you can make out the scale. Are there any questions? Okay. Let me just reduce this to something that's smaller. And do this one more time. Okay. So uh, as we may want to keep track of the error, is it possible for us to look at the error? We can actually look at the error. Okay. It is possible for us to look at the error. So what I will do is I want to keep track of the error. So I like last time I will create a, I will create a, a list called ERR, but I will calculate the error. Error is, what is the error? What was the solution? X square minus Y squared and from this I want to subtract out phi. Everyone, that is fine. Okay. So and what we will do is, we can visualize the error also. We can see what the error is. So v dot m lab scalars equals ERR, and that's what the error looks like. Okay. So the error is symmetric. The error is symmetric. If it's too small for you to see, I'll maximize it again. The error is symmetric. The error goes from plus 0.125 to minus 0.125 the error is symmetric okay so this this demo is twofold one is how do you explore when you are doing numerical solutions and so on how do you explore your schemes how do you go about that process this is interactive you can try things out okay so and the other is that we try to figure out uh, you know how 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 fast so i've got this error but this is a this error is a matrix right if you say if you ask the question what is this error this error in fact is a matrix, it is a 5 by 5 matrix, it does not help. So let me take the square of that matrix so that those num negative numbers go away. Okay. Let me take the and what I will do is I will take the square root, I will take the square root and put it in error, ERR, my list. Okay. Square root of the sum of all those terms that is why you should open and close brackets every time you do it right you can make mistakes otherwise okay so what is ERR ERR has one value so the error now the square root of the sum of the squares is 0.3 after one iteration is that fine I can do one more iteration let me go back find my iteration I will do one more iteration, okay, one more iteration. What does that do to the solution? What does that do to the solution? So that is what you get. It looks about the same, right. We will, what we will do is at a later date without doing all this error and all that, we will run it once and you can see the solution evolving, right. I will make one fancy demo where I have got everything going so that you can see the solution evolving as it goes along. Okay, which is also fun, but uh, as I had indicated, you are. Uh, let me just maximize it. As I had indicated, it looks symmetric. Everything is nice, and uh, I can also plot. 
I can also plot the error just like we did last time. So I <coughs> pull that error is x squared minus y squared minus 5. I can plot that, see what that looks like. So from 0.125 has become 0.0625. In fact, it seems to have halved. The range of the scale seems to have halved. Okay, so that's basically what we have. The range of the scale seems to have halved. So we can do we can do this business now. So we say, where did we have that? I had error is. I'll square the error, and I'll append that. I'll append that. Fine. Okay, everyone. Okay, so we can keep doing this manually instead of doing it's it's, it's, it's nice when you're doing it once or twice. But what we'll now now do is we will uh, iterate. How many times you want to do this? A hundred times. <laughs> you want to do it a hundred times? Let's do it a hundred times. See what we get. Okay, a hundred times. I am a lazy guy. I am scared I may make a mistake. So, right. So we have to be we have to be careful. So that is phi. Right and. Uh, we will stop looking at plotting the error. You understand what I am saying? So we will plot only the, we will plot only the, uh, the phi as it evolves. We can always plot the, the error part later. Okay, so we reset that. We have to recompute the error each time. So where do I have that? I have to recompute the error each time. Okay, what else? We need to square that. And I need to append it. Just make sure. I think I've got everything. I've done all the steps that I need to do. Okay. So programming. This is one thing I have to repeat. I want. We are all error prone, right? So you have to be constantly paranoid. You have to check to make sure that everything is fine. And uh, what's happening here? Well, the Solution apparently is evolving. I can't make out anything. That's the tragedy of uh, it's gone through. It's finished, right? Because the errors are small. So this is the other thing that I want you to understand. So if you look at two graphs on the screen, if you look at two graphs on the screen and the graphs look very close, that doesn't say much, right? Because the screen, typical screen resolution is like 70 dots per inch. Right or 100 dots per inch. Just because two lines are close, doesn't mean that they are close. Am I making sense? It, they are, so it doesn't mean. So you have to. That's the reason why I stored that error, the other error. Okay. So now I'll create my grace plot where we're going to look at it. Right. Remember, right in the beginning, I I had this. I'll quickly. I'm sorry. Quickly get rid of that. Right. I create my grace plot. And I'll plot. ERR. Okay, and as usual, it gives me. So this is the other thing. So a lot of us do this plotting. You have to always remember, always plot. When you are plotting residues and so on, the range is very large. So you need to go to a log scale, a log scale. So we'll change this to a log scale. So I'll make this very ambitiously. One e minus sixteen put it on a log scale, apply that, make oh I should have made that say 1000 or 10,000 or something of that sort so that it does not look cluttered up. Hmm. So it seems to have done, it seems to have done, this is only 50, it seems to have done better than that, maybe 1 e minus 20. Oh, it's not bad. <laughs> okay, so it's possible that it's possible that you get two identical numbers. 
it is actually possible. So what has happened is after about after about 30, 40 iterations your answers became the exact answer on a log scale that looks linear that looks like a straight line so you can try to find out what is the convergence rate is that fine okay. So next time in next class what we will do is we will do a demo but we will do a larger larger right larger and larger one and see what the scale works out okay is that fine thank you.